B and Puppycat is an internet cartoon created by Natasha Allegri and produced by Frederator Studios alongside Japanese animation studios from overseas. And I probably would have talked about the show earlier if I had known that it was finally finished. Seriously, half of the show came out in 2014, while the second half came out two years later in 2016. And by that time, I had forgotten about pretty much everything that happened in the story. Unlike the rest of Frederator's internet shows on their Cartoon Hangover channel, Bee and Puppycat is the result of a crowdfunding campaign conducted through Kickstarter, a website where people give other people money to make a project and sometimes end up being disappointed by the result. So on one hand, I do think that the release schedule seems a little sketchy and disingenuous, but on the other hand, I am very glad that Bee and Puppycat did not end up like Mighty Number no. 9. Originally, Bee and Puppycat was released as a pilot episode in July 2013, and viewing it again really makes me appreciate the actual series even more, as it puts all of its improvements into perspective. I would describe it as like a combination between a Studio Ghibli movie and Adventure Time, which is the show that Natasha Allegri previously worked on as a storyboard revisionist, and was also the person behind the Fiona and Cake concept. I think one of my favorite aspects of Bee and Puppycat is its basic premise. It's about an unemployed 20-something year old young woman who lives on her own in the real world, but she pays her bills by picking up odd jobs in outer space with the help of her alien companion that looks like a cat and a dog at the same time. He's not a cat dog as in that cat dog, he's more like a puppy cat thing. And I feel like the show works really well in how it combines this cutesy aesthetic with a relatable and genuine depiction of adulthood. My favorite example of this is the episode where it's Bee's birthday, and all she wants to do is relive her memories from her past birthdays and play video games, and she doesn't want it to be over, so she keeps drawing out the video game as long as possible because she doesn't want her birthday to end on all these weird feelings and missed expectations, which is exactly what it's like to be in that position as a young adult you know that it's a good episode because the space plot is actually relevant to B's situation back on Earth. And it's worth noting that the best conflicts in B and Puppycat are internal conflicts, conflicts that are within the characters and deal with their emotions, whereas for the external conflicts where B is supposed to be challenged by the world around her, it kind of feels like they're holding back. I mean, it should be a pretty big deal that B has the responsibility to take care of herself and Puppycat while paying rent for a house that doesn't even have a kitchen, but it's not really treated like it's that big of a deal. Like when her toilet overflows in one of the episodes, it isn't B who has to come fix it, but rather her four-year-old landlord who carries a toy hammer everywhere and speaks in a British accent and is a literal child who is in charge of her living space, and that really breaks the immersion for me. Throughout the episode, I was basically like, oh, so I guess we're not gonna actually have the protagonist go up against the real world, we're just gonna put her in cutesy La La Land, where she doesn't have to worry about a thing except her TV show. Also, why is there a horny cleavage crab here? Whose idea was this? It's... It's not funny. I really hate to bag on the show like this, and I'm not saying that it would be better if the audience was stressed out all the time, but I feel like Bee and Puppycat missed a really good opportunity to put the responsibilities of being an adult and taking care of yourself as the biggest obstacle for the entire show. To give people an idea of what it's like to survive off of freelance jobs and temp work, but with the fantasy element of the jobs being in outer space. If anything, that's what I would want to see in the future if Bee and Puppycat ever gets renewed for a second season as well as a more in-depth explanation regarding the giant twist at the end of the final episode. I'm not saying these things because I dislike the show, I'm saying these things because I want it to be the best internet cartoon that it can possibly be. 
And even with those issues aside, I can still respect the series for what it is. Bee and Poppycat is not a show about following your dreams, it's about living in the moment and taking things one step at a time, which is still a valid way to live your life. Not everyone can go to their dream college and get their dream job and their dream career field, so it's nice to see a narrative that focuses on a less ambitious way of life. Animation doesn't always have to be about solving the problems within the situation around you, sometimes it can be about coming to terms with the problems that are within yourself. And in addition to being about a girl taking on space jobs with her alien animal companion, that's what I see when I watch Bee and Puppy Cat.